You ready? My new thing. Blew you up on the kick drum. Come. Every uh, every drink, every beer, every claw, every beer, whatever. Always sideways top. Dent the cam. Gives you a little bit more of a thumb hold. But at the end of the night, you go around a party. You look. You see how many of the tabs are on sideways. You know how many you drink. You know if somebody says, "And bro, I a lose full my beer." I lose my drink. Who doesn't drink so their white claws? Who doesn't drink their? Who didn't drink their drink? You walk around the after party. You're picking up fifty empty cans. Yeah, full cans too. And you know who? You know who the fallen soldiers? You know who the cause is? Mine are crushed and sideways top all the time. I always know. Just a quick like, dude. I, the last time I had people here a few days ago, I want to say I lost my white claw. You know, I was simply on white claws. I lost my white claw like ten to fifteen times throughout like a ten hour drinking phase, which seems like an excessive amount. But no, but the thing about the party is. So a little dent in this, a little dent. I just tried it out. This is this is a new thing. She flows nice. It's just a good. Flow. It's going down like water it's a good tonight. Flow. It's going down. Like, it's it always goes down like water when I'm with Stevie Daniels, Johnny Manziel. The thing I think about white claws though is no matter if we go get 20, 40, 50 cases, mm -hmm. you're, you're, at some point in time you have to re. Some point they'll out. go down. No, they're gone. I I never have left the end of a party with a full fridge of claws. Yeah. Cheers, sir. Always. This um, is uh this is exciting and uncharted territories for us and I'm really fucking excited. There's a lot to talk about. It doesn't need to be talked about tonight. Um let's just say that me and the boy, I mean, uh we we've done we've done our thing in the past. We've done some business stuff together and had a great success. We're there's uh some new fun ideas on the horizon. Um and I mean, I think we should use this platform to just say it, but we're going to do we're going to do a joint podcast called Bottle and Lie. Um Ball don't lie is something I just wanted to share the thoughts of, and you can elaborate. But my dad always said something to me growing up. He said, the cream always rises to the top. And he would say that amidst, like, if I was having problems with kids or jealousy, he'd be like, dude, time will tell the truth always. Time will always be honest. Um, and that's, like, what ball don't lie kind of means to me. That's how I dissect it. It's like, when we're, we're, playing, we're playing beer pong out here and we're in a heated debate. What the fuck's the rule? Nah, 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 nah. Like, oh, he interfered or whatever. Wherever there's problems and where there's a heated, unsolved debate, like both teams feel a certain way, I say, but don't lie. And everyone can find fucking peace and solace in it because if you did interfere with it, you're not going to hit the last shot. You know what I'm saying? It's like, not fate. It's not meant to be. That's not how it goes. And that's like what we trust and blindly believe in, like to the beer pong gods. We make a joke of it, but really that's life. Since the age of like six, I think I've probably sat at like a free throw line playing basketball oh, hoop growing up. Ball don't lie has been there forever. I think it. we've seen it mean real things and way different aspects of life if you look at it that way from such such a a small thing turned into a huge thing that, that happens all the time in life yeah absolutely and you're coming from your perspective of like you know you've been through you've been through fucking shit in front of one it's already just life's just hard life's just nobody tells you that but life's just like hard like always it, don't, it, doesn't it don't matter, matter who things, you are like my life's been i've had so many fuck my problems are so minuscule like but either, even still, in my universe, life gets hard. Life gets hard a lot, you know? And you don't, like you said, you don't get taught that. But, like, doing it and then doing life, doing life in front of everyone. Doing life, like, when you just become an adult and you're like, oh, wait, I'm, like, figuring out what the hell this even is. Like, I'm but getting to live, be my own human and live without someone watching what I do. And I'm finally, like, I'm just kind of evolving into who I am. Like, bro. It's a crazy, it's a crazy concept to be doing that in front of most of society when you get at a certain level where you got at one point. You're living and learning in front of everybody. But like, bro, it's a, something that nobody could everyone watched, but no one could really relate to. And that's part of why like I've always we've always talked about this and talked about when the right time would be to come on the podcast. But bro, like I know you as a I don't think a ton of people get to know you the way I've known you. No chance. And it's and it's like something that I I really wish to share. You know, what I mean, I always wish to share. Like, people would say this or that. Like, oh, Johnny. Like, they have these. They have these. You know, assumptions there's opinions, about you. No matter what. No, yeah, no matter who you are, you see somebody from an outside point of view. Whether it's me watching TV, you watching TV, you see somebody come on your screen into your life, pretty much with what 2020 is. Mm -hmm. If you have a screen, if you see something, somebody that you don't know is probably going to enter your life in a visual type of way. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you have an opinion about them in some way, shape, or form. Absolutely. If they've made an impact on an impact on your life, which at this point in time could be five seconds. 
Absolutely. could be watching a YouTube video and seeing a commercial pop up or whatever it is. But really, you have opinion about that person, so everybody's going to be that way. But yours on another level of the notoriousness of it. Of course, it. of course. Like, there's your there's that at that normal scale, and then there's notorious. It, where like not many people got anyone who ever got around you fucking loved you at the peak. L let me look in the camera at the peak of your fame where I was. We were buddies. You were you're the exact same as you are now. Like the way you approached people and anyone who ever really got like you could be on a wave one night and they catch you in TMZs on your balls and you're like you're short with them or whatever. That shit happens. I understand that more than anything. I can't relate to your level of that. But and what I'm gonna say I was worse then. No, I was. Oh, I was, um, you, yeah, you, you were back. worse. You were worse. But what I'm saying is you were worse. <laughs> but what I'm saying is you get what I mean. Where like if you got around people. Everyone I ever, anyone who's like, dude, I, I was with, Johnny. I was with Johnny the other night. That dude's a fucking G. Like, Legend, he's the coolest bro. I'm one, for the, I'm one for the normal fucking guy from nowhere that yeah. made it to be something. And this, this That's not a, anything that's ever going to be anything different. At. Yeah. It, and it's not even, a, this isn't even a puff piece. It's like, bro, this is just what it was and what it is and what I always wanted. to. Just, I wanted the world to see this will be the what avenue it was, where they can it, get to What it to was meet in you, a nutshell really. is, is here. And if anybody was ever in my shoes, they would say that they would understand what it was. But at the end of the day, I was a kid from nowhere that went from one second walking into one football stadium as a high-end D1 college quarterback starting and having a great year, walk into one stadium. One day, one person when I walk on the bus to go to Tuscaloosa and a different day when you get back get back from class on a Monday after that. And it's just not the same. So we're talking about like fame and what like that happened for me. And it's I never going to be, it's never going to be different. So the first part of the whole thing is acceptance of it. People come up, you're going to go to dinner. It's, it's going to be pictures. It's not like this thing that people make mm -hmm. it to be this day. Like, Oh, you're famous. It's not like, it's not even that at this point. It's just like what my life is going to be forever so you just like accept it for what it is if it, i i mean there's some wild stuff that it really did happen overnight it happened well one day i went from sitting in the dorm room to like the next winning an award two months later and having to come to la for something and ended up at like an after party with like justin bieber floyd mayweather like Ty, like guys who were huge people in la and i was fucking nothing like two weeks ago you come out here and you do this Crazy. After that, I just got into a wave of like, that was really fun. I want to do that again. So a lot of like the, the stuff at the very beginning was like, yo, I want to hang around people who I've only seen on like TV. Now, everyone just fucking listen to that and think about it for one second. My thing is like, bro, of course it was fucking, of course it was the most fun thing you ever did. You went from, you know, you're, where are you this. from? You're from Kerrville? Kerrville, Texas, bro. Like people don't even understand how like remote i, I want to say I've, i played there's a show 20, in one time. There's like, like no one there. it's like a retirement community it's small I, it's it's in the middle I, of nowhere I've actually outside been of san there. antonio i've actually been there for like a there's, private there's kids. no chance no no th no i'll tell there's you no bro it's one of my first shows one of my first shows ever i got paid 1500 bucks and i played in a dude's backyard in kerrville texas and there Love was like that. 40 people there respect yeah it was like 2013 yeah um but dude i've been there fucking no one there to go that fast to the fucking polar opposite side of the spectrum of reality, where you're like, you're in the who's who. Not only are you like, what, what, I, what it was interesting, because I was here and I could see a lot of it. Like, I mean, I wasn't actually, no, at that point I was kind of watching, like I was just your buddy and I would watch, but like, bro, the who's who of the who's who fucked with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it was one of those things where, like, you were culturally like a cool motherfucker. But the like, thing is, this is not how it used to be, the social media aspect and like age. These were brand new apps, bro. Like within a couple years of making Twitter and, you were just letting and Instagram and Snapchat and all this. So I went from one day, like having all this game, walk out of a stadium, Tuscaloosa, you go back to college station, shit's normal. It's just not normal because I have 1,500 huge athletes, whether it was football or NBA or anything, on Twitter. Follow me. I'm obviously looking at a kid bored in fucking class. How old were you? Class, 18. 18. What was the wild, what was, out of all that, can you pinpoint, like, some of the wild, do the wildest follows or the wildest reach outs right out of the gate? Was uh, I remember James Harden just getting traded to Houston. Mm -hmm. I'm in College Station. We got to the point where we were just, you know, class on a Wednesday or something, just take off. You have a DM to a guy like that and go to a game. Have tickets. Say what's up in the locker room. Do mm -hmm. stuff like that. DeAndre Jordan, a guy who played at AM, was playing for the Clippers when Lob City was like in full effect. They mm -hmm. come down, they play Houston, mm -hmm. meet Blake Griffin, CP3. I'll never forget wearing a Drake 
OVO red like owl hoodie to the game. Dapping up with CP before the game, and and this picture gets like viral through like Instagram at this yep. point. I get a email the next day from Nico at October's Very Own dot com, and I had read Drake's blog for like eight years at this point. I die hard, read this blog every day. Mm-hmm. Like I check the news. Yo, we appreciate you not reaching out and asking for a hoodie pretty much. We appreciate your like genuine yeah. support. Like anytime you want to come to Toronto and like hang and like meet the boy, like of course, anytime. Bro, I save up every stipend check I have from like December, January, February, spring break rolls around. We were just looking at draft day with the picture of the cover on the album. Mm-hmm. Save up. I go to Cabo for spring break. I get this email like right before. So I'm like, fuck it. I'm going all in on this trip. I literally probably had 800 bucks. So where, what are you, right, is this after this is your freshman right year? after the Heisman, probably the next spring. Okay. The very next spring. So you're literally like the fucking man. Okay. Man, off season, just doing spring football. I take the spring break and I fly straight to Toronto the first day. I'll never forget it. We had a house party in College Station. I have like a 8 a.m. flight out of Dallas. Stay up till probably like two or three, get the whole two hours of sleep, have to get in a car and like drive from College Station to Dallas. Through probably three hours. I remember being so tired, but having to get to Toronto so bad because I had to meet the boys. Like the only person, if there's one were, person on my coming. checklist, there's one person on my checklist I wanted to meet at the beginning of it was Drake. So, like, I have to get to this. They know I'm coming. They invite me up for the weekend. I remember getting a room at, like, Holiday Inn in, like, Toronto. No idea where I'm going. Legendary. Fall asleep on the road, on College Station, like, driving to Dallas. Like, pull over, have a cop knock on my window, wake up, and I, like, power through it. Have to get to Toronto. This was, like, the biggest half-to moment for now, me ever. Now, does the cop recognize you when he knocks? No, nothing. Just knocks. Like, hey, sir, you can't be pulled over here. Boom. Go get back on the road, make it. I land in Toronto. I meet the boy at Soto Soto in, in Yorkville. I'll never forget I've it. I've been there. That's where I met him. Comes in, start talking. Bro, I have, at this point in time, I have like Drake. I have like three tattoos. I have a Drake <laughs> lyrics. Never forget him from where I came and no matter where I'm headed, I promise to stay the same. Always had it on my chest. It's your, on my wrist. Ribs, so I show it to him. Introduce so I show it to him. He literally takes his jacket. He's got this black. Like leather OVO tour jacket that they just got back from tour on from like take care. Gives it to me. He's like, Yo, where are you staying? I'm like, uh, I don't even <laughs> want to say at this point, bro. I'm yeah. like, don't even want to tell him. Like, yo, yeah. no. How they end? He goes, uh, he goes, <laughs> yo, don't worry, just just give Neek your your like room and wherever you're staying over there in the keys, and I'm gonna move you over to the Hazel Tent. Like, I don't, know if you know, I don't know if you've been to the Hazleton. Oh, I've been. I know nothing at this point. I come from a dorm. I was there on, with I, I, I come from a dorm in College Station at this point. So, so he's telling me he's taking me from a hotel to the Hazleton. We catch a vibe. You're a sophomore right now. I'm going to be a sophomore. I'm okay. still there. Yeah, okay, I'm a okay. sophomore in college. Going to be a red shirt sophomore pretty much. I go from the Holiday Inn in Toronto to the, pretty much the Hazleton. I don't know if you know they have uh, heated tile floors. In the bathroom, I didn't even know at this point like what it was. Unbelievable experience. All this stems from just like one random thing, one random act, and just like catching a vibe through this whole time. One wearing a hoodie being seen has ended up a 10-year relationship with me and Drake to the point that we just sit back today and listen to draft day, and I laugh my ass off, bro. I can't believe it was a reality. He's a special guy, that guy. I mean, mean, he's he's, clear, obviously, uh, but like... He's not nah, people, and people, special, people like, all have their opinion on him, and I'm the biggest. Like, yeah, or there was a point in time where I go to the clubs in Miami and Drake and Meek Mill are doing the whole beef, and I'd be out, I'd go by a table, <laughs> do the whole thing, and they play a Meek Mill club in the song. I'm obviously wearing an Al chain, I have my October's very own fucking chain. You were on. like, you were like a oh, dude, were I like sat a, down, you were like a version of future. I sat down, there was multiple times where they brought <laughs> bottles out. I'd be like, no, take them back if a Meek Mill song is playing. I can't do it out of respect for out of respect for my the boys. Alliance. I would like sit down, we're all sitting up, like having a good time with the boys. And Meek Mill song came on, we would like sit down, like smoke a wood, and like start, start talking. I love Couldn't that. do it. It was just like I got to the point where I defended the guy so much. Yeah, but, but because I, of what he is, you have such a personal you know, because of what he is connection, how he treated you. Like you understand, you and, the, I mean? and there was no need to, bro. It was just like such a personal vibe, and just that we were, in some ways, believe it or not, like really, really the same, and saw life through a, a lens like that at the same time together. That was cool to to have a connection with a dude. Crazy, it's crazy. I'll never forget coming up training for the first time when I was getting ready to go to the draft. 
I drove up to Hidden Hills and went to the crib in Calabasas and gave me the first the OVO black and white shoes. Got them, walked around that place. I don't, the Yolo Mansion is probably just one of the nicest places I've ever been. The, we've had one of the some, craziest we've vibes had some times ever. There. Was I with you there? We went a few times. 100%. Um, but you and Blue and all the guys had a crazy day. I out mean, there. we had a crazy time out there. You have to, you, <laughs> if you're going to ever go out there, like you really just need to like take a minute and just walk the entire links of the property, it's every statue, every everything. It's a special place, bro. It's fucking beautiful. So, I mean, to get a chance to go out there and do that, just the relationship we have has been cool as shit. What was, uh, not to mention what the guy's doing now, unbelievable. It's unbelievable, man. <laughs> it's honestly like, it's 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 taken, as far as it's, music goes. It's taken for as far granted. as music goes, it's taken for granted. I just is what it is. The guy like, releases something, it's going to pop. It's taken, for, but I'm saying like when you're in it, everyone's in it, and we're like privy to it. We're like we're taking it for granted, like how the guy doesn't miss really. But like in time, when people are removed and Drake's done, and they look back and they're like, what the fuck? Like the dude had like. I think you look at the other superstars that were in music like during the last 2008 through 2014. Who's still making really, really good music like that? I mean, he's still the leader in the culture. He's the leader in the culture. Is Kanye still making good music like that? Not even close. Not even close. Who else? Kanye is gone. gone Chris Brown's still slapping, but... Yeah, it's not the same bracket. Not the same. It's not the same bracket. Who else? Future? It's not the same bracket. Different different apples and oranges. So there's nobody. Yeah, apples and oranges. There's nobody that's still making music like that. To be in the game this long and not feel... A little bit like a boomer, like it's more you, just a lifestyle. But right you know now. what I'm saying? There's some guys like I don't even, yeah, I don't even want to say names. It's not even worth saying names. But like, there's there's guys who have had a maybe they've been in some form of relevance for six, seven years in the hip hop game or in our, you know, just music game. And it's hard when you get past year six, seven to not just have a bit of a boomer vibe to you where. If Drake's actually the opposite, where he's actually like still the cultural leader, like he's still he's gotten better. He's still giving the direct, like the young kids are still dialed into him. They're not like fuck that old dude. You know what I'm saying? Like no one really looks at Drake and like no one. There's people that hate Drake. Drake's They're been just the haters, but like though. the young culture, the hip hop culture, all these young rappers, they pay homage. They, they have to. They know he how great he is. The one the one you know thing I mean? about Drake that, that that I could say that me and you talk about all the time is he hasn't let anything for the most part that's unnecessary that you don't need to waste your energy or waste your time about because you know what you are drake knows what he is bro yeah he doesn't need to worry about all these other like little yeah. people saying anything he's been the epitome of like if i don't know you if you're not my fam and you're not like tied into the group that i have your opinion doesn't matter right which is how i've started to like live my whole life if you're not my family if you're not my close friend group you're not somebody i genuinely care about or love about have your opinion but if, if it's not good fuck off now, There's three billion people in the world. You don't need everybody to like you. Some people now, are gonna hate how, you. Now is this a new development in your psyche? Like a hundred percent. Yeah, I think you feel like you gave your energy to a lot of people that didn't. Deserve I think it. a lot of people in today's day and age waste time on things they don't need to waste time on. I think absolutely. I think the society of like the whole Instagram and social media stuff that you have to be perfect and you can't fuck up. You can't fuck up or you'll get canceled. You can't fuck up or you'll get. Nobody will fuck with you anymore. No, but like, no, like just the the culture. Like, if you think about it, but like no, the no whole one, thing. No one Instagram, shows. No Instagram one shows the gives that side of. No one nobody shows posts the a picture where they look like shit, bro. No one shows bro. the fuck ups. Yeah. Nobody posts a relationship day where they're having a bad day and they're fucking going at it, bro. Right. Nobody posts a day where they're sitting in bed all day depressed and don't feel like they want to get out. Nobody posts that, bro. Right. Because in today's day and age, it's not cool to fuck up. Yeah. It's not cool to be wrong. It's not cool to have a bad day really and not. be off from perfect. So. Uh, so the people who think that is nuts. It doesn't matter if it's you. It doesn't matter if it's me. It doesn't matter if it's Drake, bro. We were just talking about. Right. Somebody's going to wake up one day and be like, yo, I don't have it today. Right. I don't have it. Right. Whatever it is, I don't got it today. I don't want to tell the world to fuck off. Right. It's a new thing I started doing. I'd probably turn my phone off for two weekends out of the month now. Amazing. I just I put it on airplane that, mode and to. like, if it's not a, at the end of the day, if it's not a business hour, am I, like yesterday, I'm with, with my boys, I'm in Malibu doing the whole deal. Mm -hmm. I don't need to invite nobody here. I don't need to talk to anybody. Cool, turn it off, throw it in the room. I'll get it and they'll be fully charged when I get back to it. This is It's why not I, business hours, bro. It's right. not Monday through Friday where I'm working. My family knows I'm good. My people know I'm good. They know where I'm at. I share my location with all of my crew anyway, so they know where I'm at. Yeah, you're a dude who you're a dude who makes um you make like more friend like you have a, a wide friend group. Like a you really do. A lot of people 
a lot of people you could call on a, like you'll take a FaceTime and talk to. You know, I have amazing, I've noticed that about I have you. Amazing you know, like, friends, bro. Oh, you do. But people, you know, like you have that. There's something about it where like you're open and willing to connect with people. You're not like a closed off person. And I've seen the reason I bring this up is because I've seen I've seen you tighten up on that a bit because you realize you might be spread a little too thin. Like people want your energy, but you're like where your core, the core of who you are, who you always have been. Even amongst what you've gone through, which has been ups, there's been trials and tribulations. Your core has always been ready to connect with people and like actually more than ready, like actually like will, my, my willing and, able, and like almost will initiate the connection of people. I give everybody in the world that I meet that comes up to me. Right. If you're polite, if you come up in the right setting, no matter what, like there are people who are coming up, you're having a dinner. Yeah. Whatever. It's just like the bad time. It comes off a little way. You're probably not going to give them a fair shot. But for mm -hmm. me, doesn't matter if you've said, yo, I don't fuck with this dude, whatever. I give everybody from the get-go before I meet them a 100% absolute clean slate. You do. Always. It doesn't matter who it is. Now, the second that, like, you do something that as a kid I was raised to treat as disrespect, the yeah. second you cross the threshold, I'm not going to fuck with you anymore. Right. But never, you like, I've never seen here, you come here, up. Here, here, not, I'll give you a story. I'll give you a story, right? Yeah. This is, like, my, what I, like, live by and, like, what I was taught growing up. And this just, like... People will think I'm an asshole for this 100%, but it's just the way that I feel 100% justified in it. I go to, I'm at Casamigos in, in, in Old Town Scottsdale probably a couple months ago. I'm with a group of people I haven't seen in years, right? Throughout right. this whole journey, you come through, your friends in life come around that I still FaceTime weekly, but at the end of the day, I don't see them for two or three years at a time. Right. To get them all back together at the same time is like at this point in time, like a special occasion type of thing. What's the timeline? What time? What year? It's probably, this is last, this is this year. Okay, cool. So I go out hanging with all the people or at the table or drinking, we're doing whatever. And this guy comes up and he's like, yo, can I take a picture? And I look at him, I'm dead in the eye. Like I'm looking at you and say, yo, with the crew, I haven't seen him in forever, bro. I apologize, but like, I'm not going to take a picture right now. I apologize. It's nice to meet you though, homie. I appreciate you coming up. Mm -hmm. And he turns around in my face, pulls the Snapchat out mm -hmm. and turns the flash on and takes a picture flash everything and i obviously grab his phone mm -hmm. delete the picture and throw it out the the front door of the bar mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he looks at me and, and <laughs> bew <laughs> it bewildered dude yeah Beach, yo honestly. bewilderment <laughs> and i like sit back and tell this story all the time yeah. he runs i look at my boys i go play fetch <laughs> <laughs> play fetch like dead ass yeah if i genuinely look in your face and right. could not be poor more polite in my setting right. of where i'm at and tell you please sir no and you tell me please sir yes i have rights to get you the fuck out of my face yeah bro what i'm saying is like i'm i'm actually a dude who i could be a little more aggressive than you like you're actually like legitimately like you're always you're always the first to be polite about it I've never even seen you do what you just talked about, but what I'm saying is but like I can't say in that setting for being even some, that I didn't give him more than appropriate yeah. approach to say no, I do, would not like to. Right, I feel you, I feel you, I love it though. Now is that what I'm saying? Now re replay if you can. We were watching the Mike Tyson thing earlier, but he talked about the Sugar Ray Leonard looking at it in a past life. Yes, before I so, before I look at life the way I do now, what would it be exactly? So like what it, it would have been more of a like standoffish probably like take the picture but then he would like go to the other side of the club and i'd probably find a way some point in time to like start a problem because i'd be it right. would affect me it would affect my night essentially right were you now when you got really fucking famous which you did fast what happened now on your um, i'm talking about that guy who's like a competitive guy like you just that guy you just explained and then you also had this newfound, everyone fucking, you know, everyone's going to film you everywhere you go. Everyone's going to try to do things. But for a long point in time, but for news, a long but, point in time, you don't expect people to always film and do the things that it is. So it took a, a long, rough period of like going through being out and people taking cameras and not like just in the beginning, were going you like, nuts. Were you like turning up on people? Of course, it got to a point where one week we have a house party, the next week we have people come over to the house party and everything's on camera. And to that point, it got to where I'd wake up and be on ESPN the next day for mm -hmm. having people over to a normal party. So life changed immediately with cameras. 
Before this, it wasn't really that way. Right. A couple guys got in trouble here and there for like bigger things, but like it wasn't just going from normal college life. It's interesting. It's interesting. Having people over one week and then the next week coming over and it being something that's newsworthy. That's what is newsworthy at this point, bro. Dude, it's now that it's you- people's lives and what they do in a normal day like that, whether you're an athlete or a, oh, um, an actor now. or whatever. But is it really? Is there that many people out there that are looking at trash, pure trash about people's life? Absolutely. That, that, that it's newsworthy. Question, yes. I wouldn't call it newsworthy, though. Of course. I would, I would I call it trash. But, dude, everything. Like, but but I agree. TMZ is a $50 million, $100 million. TMZ. Dollar, but that's that's a business full of, of, of what it is. Right. That's a great. That's the, now, best, now try, that's the best example. But the think biggest. about, think the about no, but Think about what Twitter. Everything that trends oh. every day. Everything that happens can go fucking viral and blast off. Like, everything is news now. Everything is news. Uncredited, uncertified, unbacked news. Absolutely. So, it's interesting. You brought up a point that I haven't really, I hadn't thought of. You were, you you kind of were blasting through the levels of fame up to the top, right in the actual time frame where videos and, like, Instagram and, Actual like the cell phone video viral ability was also blossoming at the same time. When I went to college, kinda, right? it wasn't that way. When I got to Texas A and M in two thousand ten right or two thousand eleven, yeah, I started an Instagram, started a Twitter, Crazy. started a Snapchat, all in my first year of college. All this just became a thing to where it got to where you knew it was an actual thing. Crazy. Do you, so to have stories weren't there and for a long point in time. Like you couldn't just do stories. Everything you posted was there forever. Right. I can scroll back through my, which is nuts. Right. I can go back through my phone right fucking now and see something I posted from 2011. Mm. Crazy. That's not a bad idea to do something where we go back and like, look at old tweets from like to. my first one or two years at Twitter or yours. Yeah. What were you saying in 2013 on a tour bus in Kansas? Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> it was like, like yo, I where the, yo, where the were ratchets, where the ratchets at? <laughs> bro, that's a good little, that's a good little episode Honestly, right there. Great idea, Old tweets exposed. Great idea and terrible idea, all packed but into I one. I want to see it at this point. Time, <laughs> I'm like fully committed to just saying, "Fuck it." Yeah. You already sent it out to the world. Right. So at one point in time, whether you know it or not, or you knew people <laughs> fucked with you, but listen, I, you sent something crazy as fuck oh, yeah. out into the world. Oh, of course. Bro, I don't even have to look back. I probably oh, I already know. I already know. There's gonna be some crazy. I know the hundred percent certain. Two a.m. freshman college year Drake night. Take care. Soft ass lyrics <laughs> quoted for me for Not, sure. Yeah, I wasn't. I, that's one thing. I'm, that's one thing about me. I was never. I was never like a love a love guy. Like I actually, you obviously know my ex. That's the only time I've ever really cared about a girl for real. Like I was always on some. I was just always on some like trying to run up trying to have fun and run it up but i was never really do were you a, do you have a, like a real nah, girlfriend in high a, school i was i was like a i'm a sick i looking back at it now i'm a i was like a cyclical type of person like go date somebody break up like i was a relationship person through and through growing up for sure yeah i was polar, 100 percent polar opposite. not not until not until uh <laughs> till like high school uh the the first girl i really dated i went to for a big reason i've never ever told a lot of people this i probably went to texas a and m because of a bitch Hundred percent. Aren't they? Because happy? of a girl. Aren't they happy? Because of a girl. They should uh, build a statue of her. What's your, uh, <laughs> they should build a fucking. Sta- that's that. They real, call real shit. It, I was committed. They call to it Oregon. the house that Johnny built, though. They do. When I was there, they were like, "That's the house that Johnny built." Everyone said, like, everybody said that to me. Everybody. It Listen, was the, 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 the thing that I'll say about A and M, and this is the one thing, right? Yeah. There is no like undeniable difference between what happened there in those years and what it was before. You can look back a hundred years on time from now, and A and M will never be the same because of one year uh, yeah. of of that school. Yeah. And you can sit back and look at it and say there's a, a, a thousand million years of trend uh, of history behind it. Right. But it because of one year, sports oh, wise, it you look back a thousand years on time, and it's it's going to be because of that team and that day yeah. and what it was. But at the end it of the day, it's such a, it's such a different thing. thing. When they left the Southwest Conference back in the day to go to the Big Twelve, and then the Big Twelve no more to go to the SEC. You'll never get the first year back in what it was. AM was a middle of the pack, like had some really good seasons, but they had no like memorable, memorable player outside of before that win, Von Miller. Von Miller really made it was a big reason why I went there too, probably. For sure. But then you look back at it now. Was, was you, but you look back at it now, even what happened through those years. Not even one year, but like Mike Evans. Jake Matthews 
a superstar offensive lineman in the NFL, like the guys that we had come through there, yeah. are doing amazing, amazing things. Right. To where it's now on a public yeah, a setting group. and what it is. It's the right time. Right? And even through that, the guys who have kept coming through, Christian Kirk and Scottsdale, like there's been guys, Kyle Allen was there for a point in time. Like there's guys who have come through right. who have shifted the culture to where we got a factory of good ass dudes to where I can pick up and call the phone on any of them that are even in the program years after and we'll do anything for each other. So so that that's that's the one thing, right? You could have a school that you go to and be like, yo, I'm cool with dudes because we went to the same university. You may like people because Duke. Oh, he went to Duke. I fuck with him, right? Yep. This isn't a level on the football side to where I can call Von Miller, Miles, whoever it is, at any point in time and get a hold of them. And they rock with each other to the to the max, yeah, to like the dead. Fraternity. And it's cool that we've got enough people in there coming year in and year out after that that have changed the culture of it forever. It's all about the culture. Yeah. Whether we're the best or whatever, we got dudes who are coming there to get I remember about these college dudes, bro. There's a lot of people who are coming there who come from nothing. Yeah. Dirt. When I first got to Texas a and people who you come in and see their background and where they're really from to get an opportunity to do what they do, for a lot of them, it's the first time they've, like, sat in a cafeteria at a $50 million facility and had, like, a really good meal mm. in six, seven, eight years type of shit, bro. Mm -hmm. It's nuts what some of these dudes come from. Mm-hmm. The college football system and the like, like athlete system through college the, to the pros is is an unbelievable thing, bro. So so to watch these guys come in and do that and know that you watch people come from the real, real, true bottom of the earth to be able to to do what they need to do for their family and for their people is a dope, dope process that I respect the fuck out of because it's a lot of work to get to where they do to actually get paid for it for sure. with the way the NCAA is. For sure, there's a lot of guys who get exploited who and who get fucked up because they can't make money in college. Fucked up. Because they can't make money in college? Yeah, bro, these motherfuckers are... Dude, when I started making oh, I money know. in college, Mike Evans used to ask me if I could help him get his daughter diapers and, like, things to go through. A $700 stipend check a month. Doesn't cut it, bro. Yeah, it's fucked up. I took care of the... You take care of the boys. So how it doesn't are you even get, need to be said. How are you said. bread? I mean, that, that, was, that, was, that, was the thing, that was the thing where I was like, yo, I'm going to go do what I need to do. Right. It's, it'll get to a point where we talk about it yeah, one yeah, day. Yeah. But at the end of the day, if people, people come up to you in this setting, bro. I look, he's like. People come up to you in this setting. Yeah. You go to an airport, you're out in public. This is another thing we were talking about, like the fame. And like, people come up to you. A motherfucker comes up to you and says, yo, I got $5,000 for you to do something. I got twelve ninety nine in my bank account. The fuck you think I'm going to say? And now where the bread at? Now what you're saying is exactly line. What's happening? This is the first. They're it's what it they're is, finally, bro. They're finally cleared. Half our people on our team at the end of the month, if they would rather go to to the bars for one night, they wouldn't have their electricity on for for like weeks at a time. These problems that happen in like college and shit like that. There's people who don't have money to do shit. If you get the chance to turn up, you are gonna do it. Crazy. It's what it was. Crazy. And it's fucked up. It's honestly, it literally just got just got passed. Right? Did am I wrong or no? Now college football is doing what it's doing, so I don't know if it's, like, really a thing right now. I don't know if Justin Fields is sitting in Ohio State I making think, money right now. I think it just got cleared, though. Yeah, am but I, the NCAA right now is on a crumble, bro. There's barely college football. The Big Ten backs out of football. Mm. Crazy. What do you think is going to happen? They don't want to. I mean, they're not going to play this year. They're not going to play this you year. You can't, bro. Yeah. You can't say no twice. They come back. They re-vote it. Then the votes yeah, come out. Yeah, it's a weird out. situation. It's fucked. You, you don't want to know the one thing, though? The SEC is playing football. SEC, SEC, too much money. Yeah. So how's it going to work? How's it going to work? And the South, and the South some, doesn't. The South. The, okay. So some uh, conference. Another thing. Here, here's here's something else to speak into what we're we're talking about. I've traveled everywhere during COVID. Uh -huh. Everywhere. I bet I've caught thirty <laughs> flights, bro. Maybe yeah. maybe forty. Yeah. Been to Florida. <laughs> maybe forty. Texas. <laughs> Chicago. New York. Everywhere. Uh -huh. I will say about. Being in the South compared to like being in Cali and like other places because it's come really crazy at this point. What kind of political backing your state is, what goes on in it. And that's a crazy time in life Fuck that up. we've got to the point to where it's at. But mm -hmm. the South doesn't give a fuck. No. At all. Not at all. The Texas Dallas Fort Worth airport is different than the fucking LAX you or everywhere like else. You're pussy almost. Like, it, it, it's, oh, it's, it's, it's nuts. You know what I mean? Crazy. So you know the SEC is going to play. You know pretty much with the ACC saying they'd go with them, the Big 12, you get three conferences. Let it ride. Right. The people who aren't soft and don't want to play, don't play. It's it's probably more dangerous to play football than it is to go out and walk around and do and do and deal with normal COVID shit. Yeah. 
it is more likely that you're going to get your head blown off on a kickoff Absolutely. in high level Absolutely. SEC football yeah. than it is you're going to walk and touch a doorknob and and get a virus that may kill you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, dude, to be completely fucking honest, I don't. I'm confused on the whole thing. I dude. just, I just know. I've, I've been kind of just like I just, I, I've just. It's been the best thing. I will put it this way: it's been the best thing that's ever happened to me. And it's been COVID's grateful. been the best thing that's ever happened. Why do you to me. say that? I have found myself during this, and I never thought I would. I, I would be able to say that. I have played more golf, made better friends, done real like intimate things with my dogs that'll be memories that i'll remember forever i will always remember look back in one day and say remember when we got locked in our houses for two months and you couldn't really leave and everything was closed down you had to fucking postmates everything yeah yeah it was crazy it's a this smoke a two zips a week it's a historic <laughs> it's a historic time to be alive no it's, it's it's really unbelievable that you look back and say honestly for one month out of my life i was confined to my home and the united states of america it's a crazy thing to say yeah so during that, I think I just like found what I truly loved and wanted to do. And I hung myself around like good people and, and I played a lot of fucking golf, bro. Yeah. And I found a way uh, uh, to uh, be uh. able to. Biggest thing for me was saying, hey, you've tried a couple of times. I don't think football is what really truly makes you happy as a profession. Yeah. Let's get it. Let's get into that. Uh, I, so I, I, so, I, I so this know. is what's happened during quarantine. I want to know. Is quarantine, is this, is that, where, I wouldn't is say that where you had the actual I, final I wouldn't, decision? I wouldn't say that. No, I wouldn't say quarantine's what made it, what's made it that way. I started playing a little bit towards like last year and like found golf to be like something that it filled the competitive gap that I was like missing in my life that yep. made me want to keep going back to football. Yep. So I wanted to keep going back to football to fill the need of wanting to compete and beat somebody and do the whole thing, right? The competitive you're naturally edge great at that you it. get. And I love it. I'm still good, bro. We can go in the street right now and pick up a football. I'm going to do some fucking stupid shit with it, bro. <laughs> like it's, it's what it is. Dude, you're like, a I'm going to pick up a ball at any point in time and be like, yo, run between the pizza and the fucking <laughs> chunk line going on. <laughs> and I'll hit you, bro. Between the pizza and the uh, chunk uh, line. Yo, I'm dead ass. <laughs> yeah. Move the two two girls to the left and put the chunk <laughs> butt down. Put your fingers up. I'm dead. So it's like uh, at yeah. any point in time, that's the hardest part. Because yeah. you like look back and be like, yo, I just threw that pizza, threw that chunk butt and around that girl like it was dope. We gotta but, start. We gotta. But, but before that, even even that, I just got to the point of like, yo, I don't think I'm happy doing this as a profession. I just don't think it's what my my end game was supposed to be. I'll put it that way. So, through when you're in your time in the National Football League, and then through where you are now, at no point in the National Football League when you were having trouble staying focused or doing what you do, right, or do what you were doing, and we'll get into a bunch of that as this goes on. At no point. Were you thinking, like, I don't know if this is for me? I think when I was in the NFL and I was doing the thing through the, through the first year, for sure, I think my mind and my focus was on other places. And I'm the firmest believer ever of you get out what you put in. If you put in 10 bucks in, you get 10 bucks out. And that's the way my NFL career went. I didn't put what I needed to, heart, soul, everything that I did in college into the NFL because I didn't like certain things about it. So – why do you think that? I think I was more enamored with like the fame and the aspect of living the lifestyle and doing the you shit. You were having fun. I think it got to the point where I got like so famous to the point where it was like uh, it was like I enjoyed that side of it way more than I enjoyed the enjoyed the work mm -hmm. the work side of it. And I think I enjoyed the play fifty times more than I enjoyed the work. And I did the work as long as I could, and it, and it and it it wasn't enough. Is that and that's what it'll always be? Does the work when you say the work does that come does that include playing the game did you lose your love for the game playing it i don't think of any time if you drop me somewhere in a stadium like that on a game day and like you do the whole thing you ever lose the love for it but i lost the love for the, the craft. preparation for and the, what craft. It, the craft what it takes Talk about the craft of like quarterbacking bro what it takes it's to like be it's great. Yeah. fucking hard watch watch guys like deshaun watson watch guys like patrick mahomes like really watch these guys and it takes a level of like anything else as a as a rapper as a musician as a as a surgeon, as Dude. anything. I look at the quarterback position as, as like I do a doctor type of thing. You need to go to school for eight years to find out how to really do it. And I learned a lot of shit, bro. And there's a level to it that the best guys that you watch on Sundays do. And there's a reason why they do it. The fucking grind in the in the, sur the surgical aspect the of it mentally 
and the mental fortitude of the best 12 quarterbacks in the NFL is unbelievable. You want to know why a guy is at the back half of a, of a quarterback list in the NFL who's a starter, which, by the way, they're all phenomenal. They can all go pick up a football at any point in time and do some dope shit. Yep. But do you want to know why a guy who you think should be really, really good is not where he should be? It's all mental fortitude. Bro, it's hard to be a fucking quarterback in the NFL and the scrutiny and what it is and knowing you got motherfuckers critical, out there. Critical decision making at all times. It's every aspect of your mental game, bro. It's the biggest mental chess, biggest mental defense of the grind. It's not easy to go through a training camp and be up from 5 in the morning until 10 o'clock at night being the guy that directs and does everything and knows these plays. You don't have to know one person's position. You're not a receiver that has to know to line up here and do this. You need to Everybody's. know 10 other ones. Running back, left guard, right guard, every fucking thing in the NFL. To do it every day, day in and day out from training camp from to those days where you get picked up at 5.30 and you get back home at 11 o'clock at night and you do it for 30 days. Then you go into a 16-game season. Like, the grind, which I respect, you get paid a fucking lot of money to do it. It's an amazing job. There's yeah. fame with it. There's a ton of things that come with it that change your life forever. Unbelievable wealth. But at the end of the day, which is amazing, at the end of the day, it is a fucking grind to be able to do it. And I respect the hell out of the guys who do it at a top level. And for me, the biggest thing was learning how to do it efficiently as anything else is, as us when we do business, mm -hmm. as anything else. You go yeah. through growing pains of what it is. My mm -hmm. first year was a nightmare. Second mm -hmm. year, I came and got with a guy, Josh McCown, which, by the way, I'll defend this guy till the end of time. Maybe one of the greatest things has happened to the NFL quarterback room that he's been around 13 teams forever. But whatever those 13 teams had him, they're blessed. The guy was unbelievable. Coming from my first year to my second year, this guy goes, hey, Tie a little string to my backpack if you want. Follow me around, whatever you want. I'll teach you how to be a fucking goat. Love that. Texas guy knew what it was, but he just said, here, if you want to be great, follow me. Now, did, they, did, did you feel like your, your teammates, you know, as they saw you, in, and, well, you know, as things went on, do you feel like you ever lost them because of what was going on off the field? Do you feel like you lost their respect? I would, looking back on it now, I would say I absolutely 100% lost their respect. Mm. Why wouldn't you? If I was one of them looking back at what I was doing and your decisions that you make off the field impact if I put food on mine, mm -hmm. yeah, I'd feel some type of way, 100%. Mm -hmm. I would say we wasted a draft pick to go get this guy who doesn't give a fuck. Right. And that's my only thing in life that I haven't been able to look back and like fully have closure on probably now that we talk about it real shit. Amazing. It's probably one of the only things that I haven't looked back on and been able to be like super, super okay with what happened. Yeah. I don't appreciate going to Cleveland for two years and impacting and wasting two years of Joe Thomas's career. Who's a yeah. guy that's going to be a 12 time pro bowler and going to be in the hall of fame. Mm -hmm. And I regret not going and being closer with these guys and being distant into the other life that I was living. Mm -hmm. And it's nuts. And, and to, to sit back and look at it now, it's a shameful thing and something that I have to look back. And at the end of the though. day, I can only say yo to those guys. And I feel like I've told them over the past couple of years, yeah. like I've got to the point where I've hit like clarity and I went and did Joe's podcast. I still talk to Joe Hayden. And some of these guys that were like foundation members of the Browns during this time, because I think we had the talent to do it, but we mm -hmm. had a young, a bad mix of people and a point to where I got to where I didn't give it everything I had to, to everybody else. Mm -hmm. I didn't have the grind in my mind like I did to be great in college like I did in Cleveland, and I feel disrespectful to the guys who were there being being legends mm -hmm. because they worked their fucking ass off. Mm -hmm. And at, at the end of the day, it's it's more than just one player, and I think it's a whole thing. I think it's camaraderie on the team the whole deal from top to bottom and the whole and the whole organization we just obviously didn't have it but i think i was a founding founding like part of that and the whole thing didn't go the way it should and it's it sucks and that's probably the only thing that i look back on and say yeah that i feel bad for through the whole thing it's not going to vegas on a bye week and like doing the whole shit and like being an yeah. asshole young punk kid yep. because that's what i was i enjoyed partying more than i did fucking studying a playbook sue mm -hmm. me I can yeah. look back now today and say it was the wrong decision to make, but at the end of the day, so, as a 21 year old kid, I was saying fuck. So you, you. think so? Because I know we've talked about this off screen a lot. You think that you think it was the wrong thing to do to, to act the way you acted. That's how you feel. I feel it was just the it was just the 
as I look back at it now, I think it's the, uh, I think it was the route most traveled. I think it was the path like most taken. I think if you dropped anybody in my position, they would have done what I did. Yeah. I think it would have been manlier. I think it would have been more goaded yeah. and, and more legitimate to uh, to do it the other way and, and make the most of, of the talent of the whole thing and 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 treat it with more respect than yeah. I did for sure. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I think I had a mindset that I still have a piece of today, by the way. A lot of this hasn't changed. The one thing I will look back and say is, I didn't change up for fucking anybody. And it wasn't the, the That's what I'm getting at. It wasn't the it wasn't it. the GM of the Browns, the owner of the Browns coming to me and say, Hey, come here and do this for a while. And I would just say no. Yeah. That's that doesn't vibe with me. That's not what I want. What and I will say I've never changed to who I am or what I am. But the biggest thing is I've accepted it for what it is. I am who I am. I'm gonna tailor bit and make parts of my game better that, that, in life. Right. But I am at the core who I am. But that but also it, it, you could say I am who I am, but also, you were who you were. You were that's a different man. You were just figure like, dude. You had a whole different set of circumstances. Well, I'm still figuring it out. If right. That's what you I know, were gonna but say. we all are. But that, what I'm getting Everybody at, what is. I'm getting at is the reason I'm ready to start this podcast with you, and we we've been waiting all this is because I actually saw the shift where you were ready to like have the self awareness and just like look it in the eye and be a man and look it in that fucking eye and be like, dude. You know what? This this is what happened. Here's Yo, why. But at the same at the end of the day, you stare in the camera, you look it in the face, you get you come up to it, you look at the mic, you just go, hey. At that point in time of where I was at in life, I failed. Yeah. Flopped. I didn't make it and be what I needed to be to be successful. And I flopped. I failed. I wasn't good enough at that point in my time to get to where I needed to be. Let me start over. Let me try again. You just look in the camera and say, yo, I was wrong. Yeah. I apologize. My bad. I'm going to keep it moving. Yeah. You guys want to rock with me? Rock with me. And if like, not, dude, it is what it is. And that's what you do with life, bro. But you've been, listen, when I'm going to get, you've been knocking on this door. It's what comeback season was. You were ready to look it in the eye and be like, that was, I fucked up. Let me get another try, right? And then you started playing again. But that was a, that was a football centric type of thing. Right. But and for also, me, we talked about it being with other people and being a whole brand and everything. But at the end of the day, I always saw it as me coming back to really try and reincarnate a football career type of decision again. Now that I look back at it, I just look back at it as a chapter of life. Mm -hmm. It's just a chapter in a book, bro. Your whole life's a book. Right. Of I've course. never read one book that goes from front to front to back with one chapter in it. Was the last book you read like that? Close them, start a new one, go on. I failed, end a chapter, start the next chapter, see what it is. But the comeback season shit, what I thought was so special about it is what we talked about a lot off screen was that... Look, we're gonna try. We're gonna get healthy again. There was a time we were very unhealthy. We're gonna get healthy again. I'm gonna get focused on. I think I want to play football again, right? We all supported that. There was a brand, and that. But bro, the idea was that you get back as a person, as a as a, somebody who is. And actually, that was a sliver of what it is. Actually, now. a great person, and was always a great person through it. Had hard times, went down certain paths. But what I'm saying is, like, the comeback was to get back to who you're supposed to be. You know what I'm and saying? And it's been and a I process like, since then, bro. I feel like you're heading there. That's why it's exciting. The, 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 and like, whole, the whole thing's a journey. Yeah. The, the whole thing is, bro. Yeah. That's, the, that's the cool thing about it. Like, doesn't matter. You look at it through a long span of time, like, you're going to have yeah. days that are really bad. I wake up, they suck, bro. Still now. Today suck. It's never going to change. You're going to be 65 years old, bro, and wake up and say, day fucking blows. Mm. It's all about how you attack it mentally. And once you start getting to a place where you can mentally change your perspective, to what it is and accepting truth is what it is. Yeah. I've put certain themes on things on tape in the past to where I don't have a lot of credibility in certain situations. Yeah. I my behavior is tailor fit to say certain things. Right. But at the end of the day, what I'm finally learning is like, okay, cool. I can't do nothing about that. That's stamped. On to the next. Try and make it better for what I have in my hand yeah. now. Yeah. Absolutely. So the whole like comeback season thing started and got to a point where it was like so much more than that. It was just like reinvigorate to yourself to find out and keep finding out who you are as a person. Fuck, bro. I don't, you ask me what I want to do right now. I don't know. Is that cool? Can I say I don't know in today's like That's day fire. and age? That's fire, I don't know bro. what I want to do. That's how most people feel. I've been chilling, trying to figure it out, playing golf, sitting outside with my boys, trying to catch energy from people and figure out what I want to do and where I'm, what really makes me happy. Yeah. I'm still trying to figure out what really makes me happy. Is yeah. that cool? I mean, I think I think what makes you what 
what, from what I can see, is I like, got the base of it for sure. You, but you just like if you're around good people and good company, it really makes you happy. And I've and surrounded that. myself with that a lot. Almost you, every you day do. that I've hung out the last three, four months, I can honestly say I've been around amazing people. Yeah. We'll be right back with you. Never know, you know what I mean. Right after this urination break. A monologue by John Kilmer. I remember walking through the cobblestone streets of Boston as a child with my father, my little hand in his. And I'd look up at him and I'd say, Papa, why is it so hard for me to shave my testes? I talked like a little Italian mouse back then, apparently. And he said, son, someday there will be a day where someone will invent products for men where they can easily shave their dick and balls. That was Dad, a real trailblazer. Well, those days are finally over. John Kilmer here with a fantastic new product. Our friends at Manscaped have been changing the game, and we have been blessed to have been using their products for a long time now. Things like the Lawnmower 3.0. It's the quintessential razor to shave your dick and balls. Hell, your whole body even. I've been using it for months, and I have not gotten one nick since. No blood, fellas. And they got other tremendous products. They got the Ball Toner. They got ball deodorant, and now introducing, I don't have one yet, I hope I get it soon, the Weed Whacker. You shove one of those bad Larrys up your nostrils, you get the hair out of there too. We have a tremendous offer for you today. Go to manscaped.com and use promo code YNK at checkout. You're going to get 20% off your entire order. Manscaped.com, promo code YNK, get 25%. Sorry, take that back. 20% off your entire order. Tell them Steve sent you. So I'm thankful. I'm blessed for my friends. I'm blessed for the people I have all across the country. And golf, I, I'm excited. I watch, like, I haven't been out there. I don't play golf, like, but I would just like to go out and see it. I had a buddy text me, you know, Nima. Mm -hmm. from, he started his company, Pink Dolphin, which is like a big fashion brand here. But he texts me and goes, dude, I played with your boy Johnny today. Unfair. Like, <laughs> unfair. Like, I was like, dude, he's a different breed. But, that, but that's like, for, like, uh... <laughs> Uh, that's for like the casual golfer though, the person who's you. I mean, people. A lot of people that play that I've been playing with out here probably play like five, six, seven times ever, ever. Yeah. So like to so them, it looks amazing. What does it feel? Are you uh like you just told me downstairs? You're like, I can't wait to watch golf all day tomorrow. I go, I turn to you. I'm like, oh, you really, you really fuck with this sport like that. You you like watching it. Like I fuck with the guys in it like, too. I will say this: the guys that I fuck with in in golf, whether it's like DJ or Justin Thomas or like. There's a lot of good dudes around the PGA who are who are bros. They're one of us. They Who's the may, coolest motherfucker? If you had to pick I, one, if you had to pick DJ, one, gun to your head. Gun to DJ's your head. the realist, but I love Justin Thomas. That's okay. the that's probably who I like ride for the most and get up every day of a golf tournament and check and see what he did. Yeah, him between him and Tony Finau, between those two guys, I I pretty much check and see what they shoot almost every single day. Dope. I, I've met them. I've been around them. They've been great to me. I got I I do nothing but respect the people. That have been great to me. Wow. So yeah, that way. So I'm having fun. It's competitive, bro. Watching it at a high level. I was going to say. It, it, golf's a game where you go and you, and I've played some of these courses. I went to Olympia Fields in Chicago and played it a couple weeks ago. I've been on a, a wild, wild golf tour. You have. And, and the golf is going to continue, too. I have nothing but plans to just go and play every top 50, top 100 course in the country. Do you, do you think you could get to a pro level? I don't think that's even possible. The guys are uh, watching it and like really sitting here. You really here, think that, truly? They're unbelievable. 100% you truly think that. The same match. Be honest, be honest. No, no, 100%. Dead ass. Truly. Okay. Dead ass. No cap. Even the Johnny Heisman. Heis no, the it fucking doesn't matter. Youngest I'm, I'm, Heisman. I'm a, I should be able to, if I go to All some right. of these golf courses that they play at and I shoot like 72 to 76, I had an amazing day. Probably like the best that I could have. Now, but you've only been I've playing. never had a lesson. I've never done any you just of this stuff. I, I've played pretty much my whole you, life. You're but like, yourself I, I, short. I, I, listen, I don't think <laughs> knowing what it takes and watching these guys that it's even possible. Okay. But they're fucking good, bro. Mm. But it's been fun to watch. It's competitive. Yeah, it's a really dope thing. When I started watching just on social media, I was like, "This is perfect." Because you like to fucking have a good time, dude. Golf. When you're talking golf, about since since where I'm at right now, and we're not doing the thing where we're like, "Oh my," you could be really good at it and be competitive and go play in tournaments. Yeah, yeah, fuck. There's a difference between me yeah. and one of my boys in Scottsdale who goes out like I would in football. Practices every day, goes and hits balls, goes and hits putts, does the whole thing, like really grinds it like I would being a professional football player. Right. Same thing goes for golf. 
I haven't been putting that yeah, yeah, same yeah. energy You're into not thing. Put that in. So like my like golf day, what I do is like we're gonna go go What's to a like? nice enough place. Oh, it's the best. <laughs> Walk us through. It's <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> I've been uh, like America's guest at every top. Dude, it looks amazing, bro. It looks like you're playing Country Club. a beautiful, beautiful and I have a, absolutely am, amazing friends that I've made because of, of a buddy in Scottsdale. He's introduced me to like a network of people who are older, families, 40, 50, 60. They're, they're older. But I've met these like family of people in Scottsdale and Chicago that are unbelievable and the way they've treated me. So I come, go to Chicago, go to a country club for a normal day. Say we have a 9 o'clock tea time. Get there at 8, sit back on the patio. My boy has a, a Monte Cristo White Series cigar. 8.30 in the morning, sit back. What do you want to drink? Of course, it goes for the vodka Gatorade, bro. <laughs> what choice do said, I have, dude? Said no one ever. Of <laughs> vodka, that, was, that was a said no vodka, one ever. Vodka G2 with a splash, bro. Just a splash. With a, with Just a spring. Splash. Just a splash. Splash. This is with a splash. <laughs> maybe have a little breakfast burrito on the patio. Nice maybe, golf maybe, maybe course. Not. Whole day. Maybe, maybe and then not. go and play one of the best golf courses I've ever seen. I've ever played. So when you it's get out tough, there, when you bro. get out there, what's your first drive look like? Off a of G two and a, a vodka. Spritzer? Oh no no, we're, we're pacing ourselves early. We're we're we have to establish the round, see where it goes. If we're going a day where we go like birdie the first or the second hole, and we we may grind it out for a little bit. Just have the one G two off the breakfast like tea box, and then like see where it goes. The second it goes south, we make a double bogey here or there. We hit <laughs> a ball in the drink. water. No, it's, it's just one go-to. We try to fireball our way out of it. Fire, so fireball gets you hot again. You try. <laughs> it's worth a try. Maybe if it's what time of day it is or where we're at, if we're in Vegas, we may go straight to tequila. But either way, we're going to try and drink ourselves out of the funk yeah. for, a, for a little bit. Now, does it ever work? Uh, all the time. Do you start just hitting it a fucking mile it, it depends. straight? It depends. No, it's all about making putts. Golf, you can hit it. You can happy Gilmore it everywhere. If you can't putt, you suck. It's funny you say. I think you are. You could be the modern day Happy Gilmore. <laughs> you, that it's this is the new version of Happy Gilmore. You just go fucking hit it a mile and fucking happy. You know, fun. it's my favorite movie of all time. Yeah, it's, it's not. It's, it's not one even of the best. Close. Really? It's not even close. It's your that number Adam one. Sandler and that, it's it's my number one movie of all time, forever and always be. I will go with old school. Love it. I feel it's like a top five movie like for me of all time. Typical what it's you would top, think. It's top five all time. Happy Gilmore for me. I have memories on Happy Gilmore. It's ever. so great. So great. What uh, in all your time and all the people you met, either whether at the peak or after or whatever, what was mo the most like surprising? I mean, if you've been in rooms. The reason, what's really cool about it is like even shit I can't relate to. Just now, I've gotten to know more like. I know the thing with me is like I'm friends with a few A-list celebrities, but, but it, you're in LA though. But too. I'm only like I'm just tight with them. You can get them. yourself in any situation what, in LA. I can, <laughs> but not like you were at that time. Like the A-list motherfuckers would be like Mike, who like, you know what I'm saying? Like I just know po like I'm homies with Post, and but other than that, I'm on a whole different tier, really, genuinely. So I can't really relate to it. Like just out of being cool dudes, people fuck with us to a certain level, but still, there's another level. Of like when you get to like you were cool amongst the who's who, now I, who out of all those times when you think back to like the nights or the link ups or whatever you don't have to get in details about the nights but like who is the who is that who is that motherfucker who's like the realist yeah just like who was it <laughs> yeah Diddy Diddy's one of the realist Diddy's one of the realist I walk into a party at Diddy's house one night you. Diddy was one of the realest ever. I'm not surprised at all by that. Ever. <laughs> Maybe not even close. What was it like? Can you give us a nutshell? I'll tell you this. Is what makes you say that? Like, what's the undertone of what makes you say that about him? What? what just the life. There's just a lot. Like the whole lifestyle behind it too it is like the ultimate like billionaire, crazy Legend Star status. Island lifestyle of what you would expect for one of like the dopest. Music, hip hop, like rap stories that you ever hear. What are you talking about, bro? I still turn on Notorious B.I.G. all the time and fucking bang a track at least multiple times a week. It's what it is. Yeah. That whole group, their music, everything they did shaped the game for him to be balling like he's balling right now. And his sons are dope. Yeah. Christian's dope as shit. They're good kids. They seem they're, like they're all kids. really like, good like kids. Good dudes. But to walk into something like that and do it for the first time, I was like, holy shit. Fuck. What was his vibe towards you? Just cool love. as ever? All love. Always. Always been cool as shit. I've seen him multiple times. Been awesome. Mm. I mean, there's a lot of them out there. there I, and I've got to the point right now where it's like you, 
if you do certain things and you're in the scene enough, like whether it's LA or Miami or New York or whatever it is, you kind of find out quick, like who your real ones are and, and you roll with them and you trust, like you say something, I trust it to a T. Yeah. I, the people who I have in my inner circle to a T, it's the same way. A friend of your, if you have a friend, he's a friend of mine type of thing. Always. I carry that, that everywhere. Do you feel like you lost that or that got ever got muddied when you were super famous? There's a lot of relationships throughout the whole thing and through the whole process that aren't the same as they as they were before or, or never going to be probably. Right. Life goes on. People change. Things go a different route to where. You were I, meeting people at an unbelievable magnitude. Yeah, right? there's a lot of people that, that's like, like dude, that. No there's a could, lot of meetings no through, through, maintain, through now. Like, you charge a lot of it to the game. That's another saying, bro. Charge to the game. It is what it is. You cross paths. You see people. You fall out of touch. It exactly. is what it is. You don't live in the same place. Shit doesn't happen the same way. And and yeah. a lot of it comes from, I see certain people who I used to see. There's a certain group of people, I guess, that like it kind of branches off. And if you don't see the main branch anymore, you don't see the people anymore. So with it all comes the rest of the people who you were friends with type of thing, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Now, when you If you got a branch and you cut the main head off of who all those people's friends were, you don't really talk to them anymore. So it's like shrank up for me to a point of where... I only vouch for you if I know you're super, super, super vetted. Yeah. If I've, like, been around you, trust you, know you, give you the world. Now, and a friend of your take, friend is mine. How long did it take you to get where you are with that? Very, very long, very long time. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of people I kept around from high school that I only talked to now probably through a FaceTime or through a little bit here and there. And these were guys who I rode for, but I don't think we were on the same wavelength. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't think, think they were evolved. on the same path of me trying to make money or – do certain things and where I'm trying to go in my life, they weren't on that same path. Right. So finally I got to the point where I said enough is enough and you cut it off. And I've surrounded myself with people who have similar mindsets, similar goals, pure heart, same type of thing that I rock with that I like. Mm -hmm. And I'm a big energy guy, bro. You're the same way. The reason we started this and are doing what we're doing right now is because I came here one night after doing business, doing certain things. Going through the divorce, not knowing how a lot of things were going to be. And being like, yo, the first night we hung out, the energy was back to 100. And that was the most comfortable and best setting I've been in a long, long time. Mm -hmm. And we vibed. Truly vibed, though. I just get you, man. I get it. But that, that's how I it is. You thing, see man. my side of my story, and I and I see yours as well. Yeah. Same thing with making music. I, I understand there's a lot more to it than that. Why can't you be good at a million different things? Why do you just have to be good at one? Right. Why do I just have to be a good football player? Why can't I be yeah. a good person, a good businessman, a good something else in life? Why right. can't I why can't I go play baseball and try and be good at that? And why can't it not be okay? I was actually gonna bring up how jealous I was. Like I, my lifelong the only when I look back at my life and I'm like, what was uh what was like my dream growing up? It was getting drafted. It was like being a professional baseball player, right? So I go on this crazy journey. I'm I'm always like I'm like the LeBron of Little League where I'm from. And and we weren't shit bums. Like if you <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm saying like this so I played for Cranston West Little League. These motherfuckers went to the World Series like a few times. They were like actually good. And it's just weird to say because it's Rhode Island. It's a tiny place. You know what I mean? You, you'd figure there's 10 teams in Texas better than the team in Rhode Island. But for whatever reason, this neighborhood I was from was like always kind of had a good Little League program. You know what I mean? I rock with it. So I was the guy. But bro, you justify yourself to me. I believe you. No, I was, I was the guy super young, always baseball my whole life. Everything when I was a kid, my whole universe was By the like way, same. getting drafted. Really? I want to be Derek Jeter. Nothing but Derek Jeter. Insane, bro. I was honestly looking back on. I was a, like I was a, baseball a better player. baseball player. You look like a fucking. I was a better baseball player yeah. than I was a football player. Wow. I truly believe. What'd you it. play? Center field? No, oh, shortstop, bitch, all day. Yeah, you're a freak. Middle infield. So you would actually say that you're better at baseball. You were better at baseball. I just got burned out of the whole thing. Once I did it from ten years old till like through the end of high school, it was just like, it's a grind too. Spring baseball, whole thing. Here's something ball, I ball. want. Here's something I wanted to get to with you, because I had this realization. And I think you can relate to it. It's about. Look, I had this dream. My entire life was structured around being a professional baseball player, and it didn't happen. And it didn't happen in a very like abrupt way. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I was right on path, right on path, right on path. Actually, ex exceeding what our expectations were. And then I could, I, and then 
two years before I got could was eligible to get drafted, I have this surgery, right? And for me, at that point, it's the only hardship I've ever had. Ever. My whole fucking life was like, everything went my way. Everything, anything I wanted to happen, I, I figured out and I got it done. And I was excelled. And then all of a sudden, right when it mattered, right at the dream point, like right when like, oh, this was the dream to go in like the first round, you know? And to me, back then, a million dollars was the fucking, wow. The goal. Unbelievable. Oh, no, like, what? <laughs> so, Dude, so I, dude, still, I still have family that, that, that look at it that way, where it's like a million dollars. I don't know if we'll work 10 years oh and do it. God. It was unbelievable a amount of money, bro. It goes in a second if you're doing it. Unbelievable. Like, yeah. So what I'm saying is like that happens. And, bro, I look at the whole situation now 10 years later. If you told me 10 years later you were doing something totally different and you would be totally 100% convinced that this was your life path, I would be like... What? What the fuck could it be? Like, I have no idea what it could be. I have no idea if I would, I, like, I would literally be throwing, it'd be shooting in the dark as far as guessing. I had no music inclination at all. Do you know how crazy it is for me to look at people and say, yo, I don't want to play in the NFL anymore? What do you mean you don't want to do what I'm this getting at. This is what I'm getting at. So what I'm saying is, if you, if you told me I could go back, and then in that same token, yo, 10 years removed, you could go back to when you were at your prime. 20 and about to get drafted oh, what? and do it and, and not get injured. I'd say, fuck no. No you would way. Say no. You would say no. Hell no. I would you, say if no. If you could take what you knew now, think, if you could take what you knew now and go back to when you I were wouldn't I wouldn't, I wouldn't, even if I went on to be a fucking 200. I would, I would. I would. I would. You would. 100% without a doubt. Wow. There was a long, long point in time through my process of, dude, there was a long time where I, wow. uh, where I didn't accept what I kind of felt i guess there was a long time where i felt like the only option was to play football and the only option was to go be a superstar in the nfl there was a long long time where i held out thinking i fucked up beyond you want this? Yeah. beyond sure uh, does. <laughs> where i fucked up beyond fixing there was a long time where i'm like yo i fucked up i need the time machine to go back Great and, and fix what and fix what happened a long time until I truly said, yo, I know I don't want to play anymore. I know it's not what I want to do is my life goal. And I don't think it's my end game path. Was I then only then was I like able to finally see what I'm seeing now when I finally let go of it for the longest time. I wanted to go back and change going out that night or doing that thing or fighting with myself over it. Right. right? right. The acceptance of it. Right. So. So what are you saying? Are you saying that if you could, you would go back and do it? do it again i would still go back knowing go knowing back. what i know now what i'm what, what we originally were at was knowing what i know now would i go back in time at my height and do it over again with what i know now oh that's a different question 100 no it's a different question what i'm saying is would you would you change the way it's worked out in a now. sense like would you still want to be an nfl football player like if say, no, 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 no 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 dude say you no. walked say you walked the road everyone wanted you to walk and everyone who doesn't know you tells you I wouldn't be happy. No, but listen. In the slightest. Everyone's telling you I wouldn't you're, be happy in the slightest. I would have contradicted myself and everything that I believe in. That's that's what I'm getting at. Yes. That and and that's what I'm getting at. That's crazy. If I could go that's, back and change it, yes. Obviously, you would change no, the way it went now. down. Of course. But, but now what? I wouldn't be where I'm at today, sitting in this in my shoes, being able to do this podcast with you, finally getting to the point where I'm at. If I didn't just let it go and let football go, would you be having fun? Do you think at all? Like, uh, is there a version of you that, like, do you think you'd be having fun being, if say you were a great quarterback in a perfect world, bro? But it's not. A do you think world. it's like even? You know what I mean? Like, I don't even know, bro. World. I don't. I don't think. I don't think it was what I was. I think for a while it was what I was put here to do, and now I don't believe that. So I don't want to play. I don't think it's truly what I'm put here to do. So that's what I've been trying to figure it out. That's crazy. And and. See what I want to do. And I don't know what that is still. Can I, ha I have a really, I have an interesting point about this. And it sounds like it doesn't relate, but it does. So the concept of soulmates, right? Why is the, why is the concept of soulmates like something that has to be permanent in perpetuity for your entire life, right? Personally, I think there's soulmates for certain parts of your life. The, the version of yourself in this time, there's a soulmate there that was there to help you 
you were supposed to connect with or you did connect with that guided you to where you were supposed to be at your next phase. And sometimes those evolutions don't go the same path. But right at that time, they were your soulmate. And that applies to occupational. It, dep- it, it, it applies to how you see life. But there's certain phases. I was a wholly different, totally different person. I, I wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for my relationship and getting married. I wouldn't have the same attitude towards everything else if I wouldn't have gone through the divorce and stuff, too. If I wouldn't have gone through that with Bree. Right. 100%. There's no, there's no chance. And, once- and I wouldn't be here probably today sitting where I'm at if it wasn't for her as well. She helped me grow to where I needed to be and got to a point to where... I'm cool finally for the first time picking myself up, looking in the mirror and being cool with me for the first time in a long, long time. And that's where a lot of the mental stuff comes from is I can finally look myself in the mirror and be like, yo, what's good? I still look like a fucking idiot. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still going to do me, bro. I'm still good. Do you have something to say? Whatever. Bye. Have you I'm ever, go have you ever said dog. that to her? What? She what knows. What you just said. She knows. Answer the question. Have I told it to her? There was a long point in time where it was like I needed she, to hide from her. She might need to hear that, man. No, of course, of course. I, I, I think she knows it. I, what a, now, amazing moment. Let's move on. The point is your soulmate for the – my soulmate for the first fucking 20 years of my life was baseball. I learned a lot about myself on that field. Like, I learned how to be a good person. I learned how to be accountable. I learned how to – Get you the fuck out some sunflower seeds. Oh, yeah, of course. Bro, I became a man on that field. Like 100%. you did too. Paul, don't lie on that field, bro. I learned. I learned everything I needed to learn. Mean? But I, I took all these steps to like the version I am now. Who I'm, I'm happy with the version I am now. But I look back at that guy and I'm like, wow, I don't. That guy was a shit. But I'm like, I, I wasn't really thinking about anything but sports and like girls. Trying to be lit on the field and get some girls afterwards. Yeah, that's all it was. But there's that a, was. But there's, there's nothing a, there's wrong thousand, with that. There's nothing what? wrong with that, you know? I but. will say this. I think it's the normal, like, big time, like, good athlete type of thing to do, yeah. by the way. I think it is the, what I said earlier, road most traveled. I think if you get lit like that and you do that, that's probably the, the you think about nothing but trying to be lit in sports and trying to have a hot girlfriend. The fucked up part is. That's for all the lit no, dudes, No, you're exactly bro. right. That's what it is. The fucked up part is, though. I'm not thinking about school. I'm not thinking about shit. I'm thinking about trying to get good at hoop and fucking. If I didn't get, like, <laughs> dude. It goes, yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're trying to get the money so you can fuck the bitches and fly the jets and fucking. Bro, that's how, I, that's how I was wired G-wagon. always. All the shit, bro. So you, Everybody is. In high actually, school growing up, was like, yo, but John, I need to be rich. Difference between you I and I is with like, 22s on it. I've built, I've built money. I've built money up over time, but I don't, I can't relate to what happened to you either. Financially, like there's, a there's lot of people There's always a difference in being drafted, bro. There's always a difference in waking up one day and not having $10 million in your bank account. Let's talk about there's the always night, a difference Let's talk in about that. the fucking Money Menzel branding that went so crazy. LeBron was wearing it. Drake was wearing it. The Money Menzel Nike shit. Bro. Like, you were, at that point, if you look at what's evolved to social media, everyone is a brand, right? Like, everyone's getting the bag through brands. If you were in that phase now, you'd be getting the craziest bags ever just for your brand. of Like, whatever it could have been. You know what I mean? It's whatever it was. Like, think about it. If you were Johnny Manziel, you evolved, like, this was your freshman year and this happens. And it's the year that they allow you to start branding and start being able to take money. Which they are this year, I think, I believe, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Bro, what would be it'd be the biggest bag ever? The Nike shit. Tell so the Nike I shit. I could have stayed, I could have stayed two more years of college and just played at Texas A and M if they would have allowed us to like make money like that. I could have seen would you have done six, it? seven figures a year sitting in a fucking apartment in college. Station. Would you have done it? I always look back and say maybe you wish you would have gone to school, but on the path that I was on, the full sin like path that I was on, there was no way I could have gone back. I'm to saying, college. would you have done it if you could put yourself back in that psyche a little and you could get the bag? I got the bag. You got the bag. The bag I got, but even on a higher scale, way higher. Like probably. a public scale, yes, would have been crazy, but the bag was got. You, I mean, at that point in time, you don't have anything <laughs> but to do it, bro. Was got. I made sure. Legend. I made sure we could roll with the boys 20 people deep from a football team and go out on a weekend and, and have fun. Yeah. The money was spent on fuckery. <laughs> Absolutely. That's all you ever spent on. Fuck. It's all I'm, you ever I'm spent on. 19 years old. It's all you ever We're spent gonna on. We're going to go Since buy 10 you. $100 bottles at the upstairs of wherever on Northgate. There's a part of me deep down in my soul that's jealous of you. 
Dude, because I don't do shit like that. One night we go. One night we go to a bar and call. <laughs> I would station, love to be able to do that. Seven thirty, drinking red, white, and blue Budweisers, and we go to the bar and take a map and literally just blindfold, turn around, throw a dart at a map, and just take off. That's just the use the money for heard. fuckery. Who at the bar wants to go? All six of us want to go. Get in the car. We're getting. We're going to Houston now. It's legendary. We just See, went. I never did. We that. went everywhere, bro. We just would spend twenty k on just a trip for five guys on the team and just go mob somewhere. Do you regret it? Not in the slightest. Not in the slightest. The one thing people say about me, if they've ever played with me, especially my boys at a and were real ones. I took care of the dogs as much as I could have. Yeah. Always. Oh, you've always been like that. Always. Always. What a fucking crazy ride, sir. Wow. We should just keep this shit in here. What do you mean? Just keep it in here. And keep. just, you want to go to Delilah? 